I'm Nicole Compton, and right now on Deadbeat. You have a rear just about $10,000. I didn't know it was that high, but okay. We go inside Louisville's Hall of Justice with a front row seat for child support court. Don't pay your child support. Your bond's gonna be revoked. You're gonna be put in jail, and then you'll stay in jail till we work our way through this case. On today's show, a man uses his child support money to bail himself out of jail, and now the judge is running out of patience. So the county's asking me to sentence you to 178 days. Plus, what happens when your baby is hospitalized and you lose your job because of it? Beg, borrow, steals. Well, I'm not advocating committing crimes, but uh, somehow, some way, you're gonna need to find this money. Can the law get these guys back in line? It's an uncensored look at just what happens in court, right here in Louisville, right now on Deadbeat. I'm Nicole Compton with Deadbeat, the show that takes you inside of real child support court here locally. So stay tuned, you may see some people that you know. We have a full docket today, County prosecutors are pushing for jail time for the worst offenders, while attorneys are trying to get their clients back in line. As always, I'm joined by our legal advisor, Oliver Barber. Oliver, we're gonna see some serious criminal cases here today. Yes, we are, and we, we hope to learn the lessons that are necessary in order to keep people out of court like this in the future. Right, we hope you learn something serious, just as these cases are. Our first case up today is that of a man who's had a hard time paying what he owes in child support, especially after an unfortunate turn of events has left him without a job. Let's see how the court deals with this. Judge Sean Delahanty is taking up the case of Christopher Washington right now. Hello, Mr. Washington. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, Mr. Washington, you're on the docket today uh, and you're charged with felony criminal non-support. And there's an e-warrant for you. Let me look. And I think the county's agreeable to setting aside the e-warrant, converting it to a summons. Okay. So you don't have to go to jail. But it's a condition of your release that you pay this $50 each and every week. Yes, sir. Right? So uh, you're released on your own recognizance, provided you pay the $50 each and every week. Yes, sir. If you don't pay your child support, your bond's going to be revoked. You're going to be put in jail and then you'll stay in jail till we work our way through this case. Okay. All right. Now, are you employed now? No, sir. All right. Uh, is there some reason why you're not employed? Uh, I'm actively looking for work. I uh, unfortunately had a, a daughter that was born at 25 weeks. Okay. Back at the beginning of the year, spent 110 days in the NICU. Uh, she has, she's doing good now, has some minor special needs, but uh, but I'm actively looking for work now. Uh, let me do this. Um, let me see. All right, we're going to need to get you a, a summons. Do we need a summons for this? We need a... We need a all right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need you to have a seat in the jury box there. Okay. Uh, so uh, you're not going to be arrested, but we need to serve you with some papers. Uh, so what's your prospects for finding this $50 each and every week? Beg, borrow, steals. Well, I'm not advocating committing crimes, oh. but uh, somehow, some way, you're going to need to find this money. Yes, sir. And uh, we're only passing this case for three weeks, and that's to see uh, how well you are at this uh, BB and S. Well, as we can clearly see with Mr. Washington, sometimes life gets in the way. Things happen and things come up that are unpredictable, and he's a perfect example of just that. This is a really tough case for the judge because you've got a fact situation where one child is just born, the baby's right. hospitalized, uh, he or she is in NICU, and the question is, how do you balance the necessity for paying the child support for the child that's not hospitalized and taking care of the child that's hospitalized? Right. In that fact situation, family helps, friends help, and a second job helps. So I'm hoping that this works out real well for this man because this is exactly the kind of case the courts want to work with. Right, and not in the criminal side, but in the family side, when they're calculating child support, they actually look at prior born children. So, so that you don't just keep having more kids, worry about 
taking care of those and not the ones that you made up at first. And that, the one thing that does worry me about this case is that it's before the court, uh, this particular court, which means that he's got a history of not paying child support. Yes. And that history of not paying child support predated the birth of this uh, right. infant. These cases don't just automatically come to a criminal court. Many times, family court and the county attorney try to work with the people so that they don't end up as criminal cases. They don't grow like weeds. They have to be cultivated in order to be this bad. <laughs> it's hard enough to pay child support with life's everyday challenges. Even harder when you get locked up in jail. Just ask this man. Okay. Got some problems going yes, on. Yes, we do. He goes before Judge Erica Lee Williams next, right here on Dead. Nicole Compton, back with you, shining the light on unpaid child support, an epidemic right here locally. Our next case involves a man who's $10,000 behind on his payments, and now he's run into even more problems after getting locked up in jail in Shelby County. Here's Judge Erica Lee Williams presiding over the case of Reginald Bush. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. Got some problems going yes, on. Yes, we do. Okay, so let's start with this. You, you've you been in TIA before? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When was that? Uh, oh, 2009-ish, around that time. 2009-ish. Okay. Yes, ma'am. 2009, sometime thereabout. All right. Are you working? Uh, no, ma'am, not currently. I just lost a job because I had got locked up Okay. Um, and did two days and had to pay the tune to the tune of 794 to get out to try to keep my job. What was the 794 for? Uh, for out of county warrant or bond, or I can show you if you, okay, if no, you like. Okay, I mean, and get to pay that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's where the money went to for for the for the for that or the issue we're here today. Cause she, no, uh, no, no, we're not here because you missed a payment. We're here because you missed. You've only made four pay, three payments in this year. Well, that's the, what we're here for. So well, it's not just because you missed August well, the or last, September. Well, I was paying currently up until January 7th when I got locked up in Shelby County. And okay. then obviously from the 7th to March, I want to say like 13th, I do believe is what it was, is when I got out. Obviously, I lost the job that I did have. And I came back, or I got back to Louisville and got a job in May. And I had to be here in courtroom in June. And I paid to the tune of $500. And then last time I was. 471. Uh, 471. Okay, well, about $500. Um, so excuse me. And then, obviously, I got locked up again on August 14th and lost my job. And as she said, I could pay monthly to the tune of $300. I had it saved up to pay and had to pay to get out of jail. So that's Okay. Well, you're not I, taking care of business, right? So huh? that's why you, you're not taking care of business. Well, I mean, I was taking care of business. I, she said I could pay monthly. No, no, I'm talking about because you had a warrant. Oh. Because you had to pay almost $800 for it because you didn't do whatever you're supposed to do somewhere else. Well, actually, it was it was a bond. And when I went to court, she said I had credit time served. So okay. I was under the assumption that so that was year, had all been taken care of. Okay. The lady said I could pay once a month as long as it was continuous. Mm -hmm. And my first month would have been July, which mm -hmm. I had saved. And then, unfortunately, I got locked up in August and had to pay July's portion and August's portion to get out of jail to keep my job, which I ended up losing it anyway. Is this for one child? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I was to start a job last week, but last the Saturday prior to, my girlfriend got in a car wreck and almost killed herself, and I had to be at the uh, hospital. Well, somebody had to be at the hospital where to help her get back on her feet. She broke her leg, cracked the ribs. Um, they thought she dislocated or uh, fractured her spine, but um, she said to go ahead and get my court issues out of the way and to call back. Hopefully, I can start tonight or tomorrow. So. And where is this going to be? Um, I think it's called Essex, somewhere off Global. Trayport, I think is what it's called, or where it was at. How much are you going to earn there? I have no idea. You were supposed to start a job, but you didn't know how much you were going to be I, making? It was a job. Uh-oh, this does not seem to be going well. Will he run out of excuses, or will the judge run out of patience? We'll see as we continue our coverage of this case right here on Dead Beat. Nicole Compton, back with you on Deadbeat, the show that takes you inside of criminal child support court. We've been watching the case of Reginald Bush, 
in Judge Erica Lee Williams' courtroom. And when we left, it was getting tense. Mr. Bush was explaining how he had to use his child support money to bail himself out of jail. And he's still hoping to find a job. Let's go back to court now to see how the rest of this story unfolds. And I was to start a job last week. And where is this going to be? Um, I think it's called Essex, somewhere off Global Tradeport, I think is what it's called, or where it was at. How much are you going to earn there? I have no idea. You were supposed to start a job, but you didn't know how much you were going to be I, making? It was a job to keep me from coming back down. It really didn't matter at the time. I want to say like 975, I do believe, though. OK, right. And I get you want it. I want you to work. Right. But you absolutely knew or had some inkling of what they were going to pay you. No one just says, I'll go work, and you don't know if it's $2 or what. So what, what? did you all have a discussion I think, about? I think it was 975. OK. For how many hours? Uh, 40. 40? OK. Yes, ma'am. And you said you had that job, but then you had to go to the hospital? Yeah, she said I could delay it to, because I had two court days last week, and she said it would, to, uh, instead of gaining points to lose, or potentially lose mm -hmm. my job, to go ahead and get all that issue out of the way and then okay. come back. Who is this she I, you're talking uh, about? The lady at the job store. I can't think of her name exactly. But they're through the job store, a temporary company. Okay, you have a rear just at about $10,000? I didn't know it was that high, but okay. So what the county did also is calculated for me from March until now what you should have paid right the, i think she said twelve thousand something like that for 27 weeks it should have been 1755 and okay. you paid 471 because of that payment that you made in june okay, okay. that june 10th payment and then we didn't have any other payments after that the problem that we have mr bush is that you've been a client of tia's and then now i've read two different of my court calendars that say they never want you back so i don't know what happened with tia but they do not want you i mean again. i completed the course with hmm? i completed it because i had the little certificate and everything okay. so i don't know why okay i'm just telling you what, what it says i don't right. know i don't know what happened um so now we're at a point where we've got to get these payments we have to get them consistently yes right? ma'am you stipulated prior times to and stipulation means yeah i, I admit I, I wasn't paying right yes ma'am so that's that's been happening um and you've been given chances to make some traction Okay. Okay. So the county is asking me to sentence you to 178 days, because that's what's been hanging over your head. Okay. Okay. But and that would be with job search and work release. Do you have somewhere to do home incarceration? Yeah. You do. Yes, ma'am. Okay. But with with that being said, some places don't allow people on home incarceration to work, and I don't know if right. that would well, be one of them. Right. So this Tammy Tamika at Essex that you don't know how much you're going to be making, you need to talk with her and see. Okay. Okay. All right. So 178 days. Home incarceration. Do we have the HIP paper over there? Back there. Over there. Thanks, Bond. Thank you. And with the HIP, though, does that also come with the fee? Yes. So if I'm having trouble making child support payments, how would I be able to pay the fee? You ask the judge to reduce it. Do you want me to reduce it? Please, ma'am. Okay, there you go. Please, ma'am. All right. So we're going to come back for a review a month from now. We're going to see what you've been able to do, where you're working, okay. how much you're earning. You're going to be able to bring in some pay slips for me. All I'm going right. to give you job search and work release so that you can do that. So if you can go back to Essex or wherever this is, mm -hmm. then do that because I'm going to be looking for the $65 a week. Right. Must be employed in order to stay out on HIP. I can understand that. I can because understand. if you're not, then I'm going to put you in jail. Yes, so, Oliver, Mr. Bush has a lot going on here. I can't believe he actually told the judge that he used his child support money to get out of jail. Not smart. Why wasn't he paying child support every week anyway? We don't know, but I can tell you this. He's got uh, a 14-year-old boy syndrome, which means that he's got an excuse for everything. He's got excuse one, excuse well, two, life happens. excuse three, <laughs> life happens. As a practical matter, the court is not going to care about those excuses unless you get something done. Right. And in this situation, the judge is trying to work with him by allowing him to do HIP since he couldn't go back to Tia and the county attorney is wanting to put him in the slammer for 100, uh, 178 days. So the judge is trying to work with him, but he's complaining, well, judge, you know they're not going to hire somebody that's, that's in HIP, which is understandable. I've had plenty of clients who can't get a job or can't keep their job because the employer didn't want to work with HIP. Well, go back to the fact that he paid uh, his bond with his child support money. Very bad decision. What would happen if he hadn't done that? 
He did a little time in jail and then came before the judge, but he'd put the money for child support. The judge would think more kindly of him. Well, he may have been thinking, you know, if you finish, if you make it to all of your cases, then you get most of your bond money back. So maybe he was thinking that case would be resolved and he could use it again. I don't, I don't know. I think you're being too generous. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. There's more deadbeat to come. Next, can a public defender help this man get back in line? Somehow he made a large payment mm -hmm. three days after we were last in court, which is really good. Yes. See what happens in court when we return on deadbeat. Back with you again, Nicole Compton on Deadbeat, the show that takes you inside real court, real people with real cases. We see all kinds of cases involving both men and women, and all of them on this show have become serious enough to wind up in criminal court. Right now, it's the case of Matthew McKnight, who seems to be getting the message about how to get out of trouble. To court now, with Judge Sean Delahanty presiding. Hello, Mr. McKnight. Is President approaching, Your Honor? Hello, Mr. McKnight. Sorry. All right. Now, somehow he made a large payment mm -hmm. three days after we were last in court, which is really good. Yes. Now, and that's sort of, and then, how many days have passed? That was, uh, okay, August, September, and maybe a couple extra. So we've got about 10, 10 weeks. All right, and he lost his job, and you are now employed? Yes, sir. Uh, and where are you working? Uh, I actually started working for a temp company, which is getting ready to lead into a permanent position. So it's a... Uh, Temporary department. Yes. Okay. Provided you get through probation and all that other kind of stuff. And uh, how long have you been with them? Uh, first day was last Wednesday. All right. Yeah, we've passed this time numerous times, and they they make a notation here, Miss Perry, that this is past terms to the defendant, which is. Uh, I, and we'll see. And, and what I, you're trying, obviously, and. Uh, I'm going to work with you as long as you're trying, and I'm hopeful that this job, this temporary job, turns into a permanent job. If it does, you need to get a wage assignment. Well, actually, I, actually, I did talk to my boss about doing the wage assignment with the temp company, and he said that would be fine uh, in the, for the time being. Well, uh, how long are you going to be a temporary employee? Is it is it three months or six months or what? Do they, what do they tell you? Uh, they haven't they given haven't me you. a time. Okay. But what we need to do is we need to figure out a way where you're going to pay your child support regularly, right? And you're ordered to pay it once a week, but if you get paid every two weeks, it's fine to pay it every two weeks. And what you've kind of done here with this uh, large lump sum payment, because I don't know, was he required to make a lump sum payment? No, Your Honor. All right. See, and part of it is you could pay it once a month if you're ahead of the game, right? So you're, you, first of the month, you pay your entire month's worth of child support. That's fine by me. And do that the first of every month. And that would work out. Yes, sir. But what we need to do is we got to see the payments coming in regularly, right? Timely and weekly payments. And we'll see where you are. Now, it does say that he's supposed to pay $123 as a lump sum. Because that's sort of what he's behind. Yes. All right. Uh, anyway, I think that you're... You know, you're not ignoring your responsibilities, and that's a good thing, because you really can't. And I'm hopeful that this new job works out for you. And we'll see where you're at. And if you can ever get a job that you can tolerate and is paying you enough money that you can get a, and then get a wage assignment, and the money comes right out of your check every pay period, then that's a long way to solving your problem. All right? Yes, sir. I will see you then. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any questions? So, Oliver, it looks like Mr. McKnight realized the last time that he needed to make some kind of payment and try to stay out of trouble. And it looks like that's what he's trying to do. He made a lump sum payment that got him even, uh, either even or close. 
Yes. He wants a wage assignment. That's very easy to do. You'll see that the judge instructs people on how to do that. And once he gets that wage assignment and it starts going, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. The only thing he's got to worry about is keeping the job. The child support will come out every week or every month as it's set up, and he'll be just fine. And so for those of you who don't know what a wage assignment is, a wage assignment is a court order that allows child support to come directly out of your paycheck. And if you switch jobs and you have a wage assignment, you have to let the child support office know or the courts know to change it. One caution I give to my clients um, that I have is if it's short and they don't take out enough or you didn't work enough hours, make sure that you make up the difference by taking it to the county attorney's office. Don't think because they didn't take it or they didn't start taking it that you got to uh, get out of jail free card because you <laughs> may end up in jail. One of the things that is beneficial to this man in this particular case is it's a voluntary wage assignment. So it looks good. It looks like he's trying hard and he is. So he looks as good as he's trying. Yes. And that's what we want to see. Even though we love being here to educate you on the child support system, we don't want to see you on our show unless you're there for doing something great. So hopefully the next time we see him, <laughs> he'll be in an even better situation, but it won't be worse. I'd like to see him come back with something great. That'd be cool. If you're having trouble collecting from a deadbeat ex or you just need to know how to get yourself back in line, Hit us up on Facebook, where we continue this conversation. We read every message and try to respond. We would love to hear from you. For Oliver Barber, I'm Nicole Compton with Deadbeat.